Good morning, everyone. I call to order the Committee on House Administration for today's hearing on establishing a commission to study the potential creation of a National Woman's History Museum. And first of all, the hearing record will remain open for five legislative days so that members might be able to submit any materials uh, that they wish to be included as well. And uh, we do have a quorum present, so we may proceed. First of all, I want to thank our, our witnesses for taking the time to testify before the committee uh, today. We have one witness here, and our other witness is uh, on her way, hopefully coming down the hallway here. Uh, and uh, uh, we'll, uh, we'll proceed as we can here this morning. But we certainly want to thank, uh, thank them for their continued dedication and persistence in this very important and I think, uh, frankly, long overdue acknowledgement of women's contributions throughout the history of our great nation. Uh, both of uh, my distinguished colleagues, uh, Ms. Blackburn, who again I say will be here shortly, and Ms. Maloney as well, have joined many of our colleagues from both chambers in the House and in the Senate in leading this initiative to create a museum here in the nation's capital to recognize the accomplishments of great American women. And each day, certainly, as we walk through the halls of Congress, we see some of the different sculptures that are uh, in the halls of uh, American pioneers like uh, uh, Susan B. Anthony or Rosa Parks, uh, Helen Keller, we're certainly reminded of the great contributions that women have played uh, in our very rich history, often despite of, uh, quite frankly, or because of the great adversity that they have overcome. Jeanette Rankin, whose statue adorns Emancipation Hall at the Capitol's Visitor Center, was not only the first woman elected to the House of Representatives, she was a Republican from Montana, but she was actually elected in 1916, which was four years before women were even guaranteed the right to vote in our Constitution, mm -hmm. which I think is a remarkable mm -hmm. uh, thing to note. And women's contributions are certainly not just social or political, but more and more each day they are economic as well. And with over 65 million women in the workforce today, women are quickly transforming corporate America. The contribution of women in our nation's history is huge, really, very immense. They've aided and served alongside our patriots during the Revolutionary War. Women like Clara Barton, who aided and nursed our soldiers in the field in the Civil War. Uh, in my home state of Michigan, certainly Rosie the Riveter, uh, my grandmother was one of the Rosies, uh, helping to build our, our arms, all of our armaments. Uh, we were the arsenal of democracy, which uh, built the armaments that literally led the entire world to peace, quite frankly, helped our troops achieve victory. And today they work in every facet of our economy, up to and including CEOs of Fortune 500 companies. And again, as a point of personal pri privilege, I have to mention, mm -hmm. coming from Michigan, that this just, just this week, Mary Barra, uh, was announced as a new CEO of General Motors, which is the first time a woman has ever headed uh, one of our domestic uh, auto uh, companies ever. That, was, uh, that is really uh, breaking the glass ceiling, so they speak, a, a good car gal. But uh, women have stepped to the forefront of innovation, business, politics, you name it, whether within their own communities, their state, or certainly across the entire nation. And their stories are important to share as their accomplishments make up the very fabric of our nation. It's our responsibility to keep this history alive for today's generation and certainly for generations uh, who will come after us all. <clears throat> and that's why we're here today, to examine the establishment of a National Woman's History Museum. Since the 105th Congress, various bills have been introduced to advance the creation of a woman's museum. One bill even passed the House, two in the Senate. Our first witness, uh, witnesses today, both uh, Ms. Maloney and Ms. Blackburn, authored and co-sponsored H.R. 863, this Congress, which would establish a commission to study the creation of a museum. So we're also going to hear today on our second panel from Ms. Joan Wages, uh, who is the president and CEO of the nonprofit National Women's History Museum, which has been pursuing a national museum since 1996. I certainly join our witnesses in their enthusiasm for this initiative and welcome others, but I also realize, I think we all do, as they very well know, that there are compelling concerns and certain obstacles that require us to approach the establishment of this museum with very careful thought and consideration, similar to that which every American woman puts into action every day. Museums are very expensive propositions, and certainly given our current uh, restrictions and our fiscal environment, Federal funds will be extremely scarce, and the fully private funding model uh, championed by the National Women's History Museum, I think, is an uh, excellent approach given the budget constraints uh, that we live with. 
then there is a matter of governance. Recent museum commissions have recommended that new facilities be part of the Smithsonian. And this is a decision that cannot be taken lightly as it has major repercussions for the museum structure, for collections management and financial support as well, especially when we prefer to see this built and maintained again, as we say, with private funds. Over the last decade, the Smithsonian has added two major facilities to its collection, and a third one, the National Museum of African American History and Culture, should open in late 2015, bringing the total number of Smithsonian museums uh, to 19. There's also uh, pending legislation to create a National Museum of the American Latino, which uh, I, I'm very hopeful this, this committee will have a hearing on next year, as I believe that it, is, it too is very worthy, a worthy initiative that deserves our attention. And of course, there's only so much space available on the National Mall, and concerns have been raised about the museum's location. These issues warrant thorough review and reflection. Establishing a commission may be a step in the right direction to really fully flesh out how such a museum which would integrate with our existing national, regional, and local cultural institutions. What it will cost, how can we fund it, and where would we put it? Notwithstanding these issues, the concept of a National Women's History Museum to serve as a repository for the profound social, intellectual, and cultural contributions of fully half of our society is certainly deserving of our attention. Demographics also demonstrate a significant potential level of public interest. Women represent more than half of our population today, as we say, and currently outnumber men actually in, current, uh, in college enrollment. These are really uh, recent developments, significant developments, of which I'm sure that our foremothers would be very proud, and I'm certain that every American man and woman would find value in investigating this history that has allowed us to get to this point. So again, I uh, will look forward to uh, hearing from our witnesses. We appreciate uh, their attendance here today. And at this time, I would like to recognize my colleague, uh, Congresswoman Lofgren, for uh, the purpose of providing an opening statement.